It's that time again. We've got brand new CPUs, brand new motherboards, and DDR5, all this new hardware. And like you enthusiasts out there, I want to have the latest and greatest. And indeed, that's, that's what I ended up doing, upgraded my system here. So we'll talk about my thoughts about the Strix, uh, what is this, X670E uh, uh, Strix I motherboard. We'll talk about Ryzen 7000 and my thoughts about upgrading from the previous platform over to this one. And just, just you know, we'll chat. All right, just to get it out of the way here, this build here, this is a mini ITX build. It's got a very unique case, and this case is the Yule Beast Monument Motif. Uh, if you want to go ahead and pick that up, I'll make sure to link that in the description down below. Of course, it's not sponsored by them, but I do think it is a very interesting case uh, that shows off your hardware. So I really, really like it. I've been using it for the last couple of years. Taking a step back here, I'm coming from, for this build specifically, I'm coming from a Ryzen 5800X on a ROG, what is this? This is the Impact. This is the Crosshair Impact motherboard. It's, it's done well, I really like it. In fact, it's a very premium motherboard, mini ITX motherboard, even, even currently out of all of the AM4 motherboards. You know, this thing came out early in the life cycle and it's been, it's been really good for the entire life cycle of AM4. With that said here, that's kind of why I decided to go with Ryzen 7000 because this is the brand new inception of the brand new AM5 socket, the chipset, and this platform is going to be good for two, three, four, good, four or so years. Hopefully AMD doesn't change that up too much, but uh, this is where the ROG X670E gaming Wi-Fi uh, Strix I mini ITX motherboard comes in. My general thoughts about this motherboard. This is very similar to the past Strix I mini ITX motherboards. If you have had either the Intel or the AM4 versions, it's very similar. Uh, it's a step down from the impact, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's any less proficient at you know performance. But you do lose out on a little bit of the, the flashy stuff. For example, there's no uh, metal backplate on this. There is no RGB on this motherboard um, because it doesn't have the backplate. It doesn't have any of the, that, that stuff. It does have the addressable RGB headers and the regular RGB headers. You can, you can decorate your case with RGB all you like with the headers but it doesn't come with any of the lights. So some people may like that, some people may not. Um, I don't really care either way, but it's nice blacked out. It looks pretty good. Um, and you know, it does have all of the basic functions that you would expect out of a ROG uh, Strix motherboard, right? So it does have a few tricks up, up its sleeve. There is a little daughter board that houses both SATA connections USB connections and uh, what is it? The uh, front panel connector is also here. I chose not to use it because I don't have any SATA, SATA, SATA needs or USB needs as this is purely external, right? Or open air case, all the, the USBs out back. So I've left that off. That's perfectly fine. Um, there is a little header on this motherboard just for the power switch. So that's perfect for me. I don't need the reset switch. I don't have a reset switch. The power switch is on the back. So that's all I need. Other thoughts about this motherboard. Um, DDR5, uh, two slots. If two slots is enough for you, that's, that's good. If you want four slots, this isn't for you. In fact, mini ITX isn't for you. So I've got two sticks of uh, DDR5 Dominator Platinum 5600 megahertz. Uh, 16 gigs each for a total of 32. This is purely a gaming system. So uh, that's kind of where I'm coming in from. I'm not meant for, this isn't meant for a lot of processing, core crunching, graphics, whatever. Uh, you know, 3D rendering stuff. This is purely for gaming. 
The intent here is I've got a 7900X 12 core CPU. I've currently got only a 3060 Ti in here. The plan is to get a 4090 in here, get a water block on there, and get a radiator, radiator on the back, a 240 millimeter radiator on the back. Uh, so water-cooled GPU, air-cooled CPU. We'll talk about performance probably in another video, maybe when I get the 4090 or just separately the performance of, of overclocking the 7900X because I've already done some testing. Very happy with what I'm seeing, but I think this video will just be a little too long if I go in and that. So just this is all just my thoughts about the system as it is right now. The motherboard uh, has an EPS power outlet, inlet, inlet, eight pin at the very top left corner and the 24 pin on the right. And I don't know, can you see that? Here you go. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. It's different from the impact motherboard because the impact had the 24 pin on the side and the eight pin all on the side. So all the cables came in on the side. You've, now you've got some cables coming from the left, cables up from the top. The past couple Strix boards were like this, so it's not that surprising. That's fine. Moving to the back of the motherboard here, the connectivity of the impact board is pretty good. Uh, it's really all the same, very similar to all of the ROG boards, except for the top end extreme. Uh, you've got your HDMI because this has integrated graphics in the you know 7000 series. You've, most of these, USB type A's ports are 10 gigabits per second. You got one, two, three, four, five that are 10 gigabit, three that are regular USB threes, and then you got two Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 ports, type C ports. So those are great if you have Thunderbolt connectors um, and, 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 and or just very high bandwidth cables or connections that you need, those are gonna be amazing, 40 gigabits per second. It does have a 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port, uh, which is gonna be great if you have, you know, Google Fiber, one gig, two gig connections. Like me, I've got uh, AT&T, Uverse, Fiber, two gig connection from the internet. So two and a half is perfect. Honestly, I would have preferred a 10 gig because the rest of my house is 10 gig, but I can settle for two. And if I really wanted that 10 gig, uh, Ethernet, I just use the USB 4, Thunderbolt 4 to one of those 10 gig adapters and just run that and that will be fine as well. Moving on to Wi-Fi, we got Wi-Fi 6E, it comes with a little uh, antenna, pretty standard ROG magnetic, clips onto the back and it just works just fine. Now back to the motherboard itself here. I just remembered you've got PCIe 5.0 on the main P single PCIe slot. There's really no point for that at the moment. All of G the GPUs that are out right now are only PCIe 4.0. Maybe we'll see what AMD does, but uh, there's really no point in PCIe 5.0 except for the storage, which this does have two M.2 storage connections one of which is PCIe 5, one of which is PCIe 4.0. So currently I've got a 980 Pro in two terabyte in the PCIe 4.0 slot, keeping the five empty for the 990 Pro, the PCIe 5.0 M.2 uh, stick that's gonna be coming out either this month or next month from Samsung. I'm really excited about that. It's gonna be super fast. That's going straight in here and we'll do some testing and, and it'll be exciting. So, you know, stay tuned for that. Power delivery, what is this? I think this is what, 10 plus two phase? Yeah, 10 plus two power stages, 10 amps each. Um, there's not much more to say about that. Really for, for Ryzen 7000, 7000 isn't even that power hungry. From what I've been seeing, the 7800X, you're kind of pulling 150, 160 watts, even with PBO on. Um, on the 7950X, you're going to be doing probably closer to 200, 220, plenty for this motherboard right here. And we'll just have to see, <laughs> being that this is the first generation of AM5, Ryzen 7000, we're going to have to, and this platform is going to be around for the next two, three, four, five years, or however long, uh, AMD decides to keep this AM5, you know, platform here. 
We'll have to see if AMD comes out with something crazy, 32 thread, you know, 32 core, 64 thread on mainstream, and that pulls 300 watts, right? We'll have to we'll have to keep our eye out for that. But anything short of that, really, this motherboard should be able to handle almost all the C should should be able to handle all the CPUs coming out uh, in the next near future. So that's why I adopted this right now. Um, the other elephant in the room is that I want to talk about is the cost of this motherboard because you know a lot of you guys are on the fence about upgrading to AM5 uh, because of DDR prices of DDR5 because of the prices of the CPUs and primarily because of the prices of the motherboard. You know this motherboard with all the features is not cheap. It's coming in at about four hundred sixty to four hundred eighty dollars, give or take plus tax, you're over $500. And $500 for a mini ITX motherboard, that's a lot of money. Uh, given the state of things, supply chain still not kind, still working itself out, um, and, and just with inflation and the way things are right now, I think that's just the way it is. If you look, the Crosshair Extreme is at $1,000, right? And, and really, Five hundred, thousand dollars. They're just all very, very expensive motherboards. B six hundred and fifty is out now, and those prices are much more acceptable. But if you want X six hundred and seventy E, which is the PCIe five point zero, and then the M dot two five point zero connectivity, then you're gonna have to you know, you're gonna have to shell out some money for it. So my thoughts were. Since I'm upgrading and I want to get the platform right, and I'm going to be upgrading the CPU over the next few years using the same platform, uh, that's why I went, you know, went all out. The last thing I want to touch upon is the ID, you know, where I'm going with this build here. I'm staying air cooled on the CPU, and in a separate video, we'll talk about the performance of the 7900X on air cooled and overclocking performance. And, you know, slight teaser here. It's really, really good and, and really excited to talk about that in another video. But uh, I've got a Noctua D15S. So this is the single fan version of the D15. And it's just, long story short, it's, it's great for the CPU. Uh, you don't need to go to water cooling if, if you, you know, you're picking up something like this. For the memory, I've got 32 gigs of DDR5 Dominator Platinum 5600 megahertz memory. I wanted the 6000, but couldn't get my hands on that, so I settled for the 5600. Probably I'll upgrade again once uh, Ryzen 7000 3D comes out, and we'll throw the 3D you know, CPU in there and upgrade the memory. I, I, I can't remember if I mentioned the GPU. This is the 3060 Ti from EVGA. May you rest in peace. Um, the plan is to swap this out eventually when I'm, I get my hands on the 4090FE, throw a water block on there, throw a 240 millimeter radiator on the back. You can see here, I've upgraded the case with this radiator mount already. It's ready to go for the radiator. So radiator pump, connect the GPU to this 240 radiator. It'll run very cool, well, kind of cool. 450 watts on a 240 millimeter radiator should probably stay in the 50s or so degrees Celsius, uh, so relatively cool. The main reason for that is not so much the cooling, but just to cut down on noise, uh, even though, and, and to cut down on size. So the FE4090 being a triple slot is going to be, you know, it's going to be I've got two slots here. I've got just enough for, for, for that third slot, but that fan is going to be touching, touching the metal here and it's going to be coming out to here. So putting that water block is because of the PCB short, that water block is going to shorten it up and it's going to be going to one slot and all of the radiator stuff is going to be on the back. So kind of just tidy this thing up a little bit, even with the 4090. I think that's going to be you know, really, really good looking. So... Maybe if I can get my hands on the 4090 FE. I missed it on the launch day. I missed it earlier this week on Wednesday because there was a drop on Wednesday. Missed that. Um, unfortunately, maybe we'll have better luck next week on getting myself 
that F4090 FE. So yeah, that was just a quick look at the changes for this build. Uh, just as a reminder here, I've got two videos coming up. One is the 7900X air cooling and overclocking video to show you the performance of the CPU. And eventually, whenever I get my hands on the 4090 FE, that will be a separate video of me installing that, getting it water blocked, and you know, we'll do tests on that as well. So if you wanna be reminded or notified by YouTube, go ahead and subscribe, and go ahead and comment down below. Tell me if you ended up getting Ryzen 7000 and what model CPU did you get? Or in fact, if you didn't, why you are sitting on the fence and what would you make you wanna upgrade? As always, it's Super User Sand here, and I'll see you guys in the next one.